Hi, I'm Osman Faruqi, and this week on The Filter, we're talking diversity in the arts. What did the priest say when I punched him in the dick? What? Whoa. You're a dickhead! <laughs> 2017 and Australia is still having pretty regular blackface controversies. And if we're talking about the issue of blackface on Australian TV in particular, you can't go past the characters created by writer and actor Chris Louie. There's Jonah from Tonga, who first appeared on our screens in Summer Heights Eye back in 2008, and again in a 2014 spin-off series which was pulled from New Zealand's Maori TV last month for perpetuating negative stereotypes. This is Esther Mouse. Smouse. Then there's Lily's even more controversial African-American rapper, Smouse. Lily got into hot water in July when he shared a music video on Instagram featuring a Smouse that, coincidentally and unintentionally according to Lily, contained parallels to the death of indigenous Kalgoorlie teenager Elijah Doherty. Joining me in the discussion today is performance artist and activist Candy Royale and Chaz Lichardello from The Chaser. So I'm just wondering um, your guys' perspectives on Chris Lilly's kind of humour. Is it from a different era? Is it fair for Maori TV to block? Or are we all being a little bit too sensitive? What do you think? Well, I, I must say, when, when S Mouse in particular first came out, I yeah. thought to myself, I thought the rules have changed a bit. <laughs> that you can't do this kind of stuff anymore. But yeah. no one seemed bothered by it at the time. Slap my heel, slap my balls, there was a little bit of controversy, but not much. It wasn't that long ago either. It was 2012. No yeah, yeah, it was quite recently. No one ever done this shit. And that's why I made my impact, you know what I'm saying? All them African zoos, England zoos. But my view of this kind of thing is that there's nothing objective. It's, 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 this is all subjective. There's no such thing as, in my view, objectively racist. It's what some people find racist. And you just need to take into consideration other people's feelings and be considerate about those kinds of things. And then over time, that will change. Over time that will change, in different contexts that will change, in different cultures that will change. And between, say, so what was in Vercom was racist in 1990 is very different to what's racist in 2017. Yeah, right. And so I'm not surprised that what we got, what Chris Lee got away with in 2012, he might not be able to get away with in 2017. And what, you, as a comedian, I feel you need to do is you need to be skilled at taking the temperature of society and saying, what can Staying I get away with? Staying up to date with, with expectations. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, Andy? So I unequivocally disagree with everything you just <laughs> said. <laughs> um, because you're saying that there wasn't that much uproar about in 2012 about Chris Lilly. But that's not true, actually. Um, lots of people of colour were writing about how upset they were that this character, that this comedian was using blackface um, and yet no one was giving air to those grievances um, in mainstream media. So whilst it seemed like no one was making a fuss, lots of people were making a fuss. Um, and you talk about like things that are racist now that you know weren't in the past. I don't agree with that either because no one's been doing blackface in America for decades. And Australia is so far behind in its racial politics that they still think that there are people who, here who think it's okay to do blackface and it hasn't been okay to do blackface for a really long time in other parts of the world. On the time thing, mm. I'd give an example myself mm. that, that 20 years ago or 30 years ago, it would have been unacceptable to have a pot shot and an Italian. Yes. But now people go, oh, who cares? You're, you're white. Yeah, you're right. like it. Like yeah, you're, yeah. you're not, you don't have you a problem. You guys have integrated now. Yeah, you're, yeah, yeah. You're, not just that, but you're, you're not, you're not a discriminating against group. Right, right. So you, so what are you doing? And, and I, I do feel like that. I feel like are as an Italian, Italian, yeah, I'm yeah. Italian. I feel like as an Italian that I have no grounds to complain about being dealt with in a racial way. And so I feel like over time, the standards of general society do change. So when we talk about blackface in Australia, there's the Chris Lilly yeah. example, there's the quite famous 2009 skit on Hey Eight Saturday where there yeah. was a Jackson 5 impersonation, Harry Connick Jr. famously gave it 0 out of 10. Take the Jackson 5 and subtract this 5. <laughs> <laughs> Which has a couple of years before that, yes. you guys did your own We did our own, Jackson we did, five we did Jackson 5 thing. You need to get elected, you've been in opposition too long. And to be honest, like, I'm, I'm not going to make any excuses. We're doing a song parody of Jackson 5, and there's like an ABC ALP thing for the election. Yes. Yeah, and yeah, and so, and yeah, and we, we were blackface. There is no other way to describe it. And at the time, it didn't occur to me there was an issue. I just thought we're doing a song parody. Was there parody. any blowback at all then? None. Yeah, there right. were no complaints. There was no phone calls. There were, there was, social media was around. We got nothing. And it didn't even occur to us. And then later on, after I had Saturday thing, I saw it back again for, oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> like, yeah, I, just, yeah, yeah. I just hadn't even been aware of it. And it's one of those things where, like, this might be one where you go, you know, it was always terrible 
that you just shouldn't have done it. And I'm not making excuses. I'm just, I'm just saying that the, that, that if I had my time again, we absolutely would not have done it. Not because I was scared of, of controversy. We had a lot of controversy yeah, on the chaser, yeah. but just because it obviously offended people, and that's, that's wrong. And do you think that if that sketch had come out today, given the kind of changed environment that we're talking about, there would have been a lot more commentary? Absolutely. And I, there's no way. I, after Jack, the Jackson 5 thing, I'm going to be honest here, the Jackson 5 thing on Hey It's Saturday yeah. was almost identical to what we did. Yeah, yeah right. Like, it, it's it, was, just, it was just a year you later. You guys got lucky that no one brings that up. Well, yeah, well, yes and no in that I'm happy to own it because, right. because unlike what we're saying with Chris Lilly, I, I'm not going to sure. recant yeah. On, yeah, yeah. My, on, my, on what we've done. I just think that you just need to... You just need to be responsible and own what you've done and then move on and be better. I think um, I'm interested in your view on this. I think one of the reasons why people, it's no, by no means the only reason, but one of the reasons why people from diverse backgrounds get quite agitated about representations in the media is because how few genuine representations there are when it comes yeah. to TV shows. Commercial breakfast television is a great example, like it's the widest thing you'll ever see. And then when we do see some of those shows, they tend to play to racial characters and stereotypes. And an example of that in the last 12 months has been Here Come the Habibs. And yeah. Kenny, that's a show that you particularly um, took, took a bit of an axe to. Yes. W w what happened there? Well, I mean, all I saw in the beginning was a little, a little short, and it's um, the Habibs walking into this property carrying an argile, which is the hookah pipe, over his shoulder like a bazooka, and like. Sorry, sorry for laughing. About but the, it is laughable because it's this ridiculous like stereotype of Arabs being violent, and there's like the li 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 going on in the background, and it's like this Arabic music happening, and there are these horrified white people, and I was just like. I cannot believe in this environment of Islamophobia, of this anti-Arab hatred, that they would produce a show like this. And when was the last time I saw an Arab or a Lebanese person in the media in a positive spin? Like, how many of us are in this nation contributing, living, you know, working in community? And what we get is this, this awful, awful show. And so, yeah, I, st I started a, a petition. I'm wrote some opinion pieces for Fairfax and SBS and um, and the the blowback I got was incredible. Right, like, what were people saying? That I can't take a joke. Yeah, right. That I don't have a sense of humour. And it always boiled down to this idea that I don't know how to laugh at myself. But when you look at Fear of a Brown Planet, for example, like I find that humour really great. And um, uh, Nazim, I love his humour because it's really political, it's really challenging, it pushes people's buttons, but he's not laughing at anyone. He's not picking a group of people to make fun of. This one's a good one if you're meeting someone for the first time and you want to establish a good relationship with them, you say, G'day, dickhead. G'day, dickhead. Okay, I'll get you to try that one. G'day, dickhead. 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 That's right. And that's how you make friends. People were like, oh, what about houses and blah, blah, like that other, you know, um, and pizza. Like, I don't want to laugh at people because they're poor. Like, how is that funny? Why are we doing that? Because we sit above them, we can, we can laugh at poor people? Like, that's really awful. Yeah, I actually have to admit, I love pizza. And I, I accept that, like, in hindsight, it has a lot of these stereotypes that we don't appreciate. But for me, growing up, it was the first time I saw any TV show that just, like, had a majority cast of migrant characters from all different backgrounds. At least they were writing it. Yeah, yeah, they were writing it, they were producing it, they were the guys owning it. And even though they fell into the stereotype trap time and time again, they were also quite real. It was just guys working in a delivery shop, trying to deal with life, dealing with like racism, dealing with racist cops, like all the experience a lot of migrant communities in Western Sydney have. We're investigating a report of weird yelping noises coming from this house. I don't know, but I was waxing my cousin Mohammed's back before. Mohammed? <sighs> See? We're going to the beach later. I think for me, it's just like, it's not that hard to make a show look like Australia. Yeah. And if it doesn't look like Australia, you've actually had to work quite hard to make it not yes. look like Australia. At least on commercial TV, people in a position of authority are a very, represent a very, very small slice of society. And I'm not just talking about race either. Yeah, for sure. I'm talking about age. I'm talking about bogans. When was the last time you saw a bogan newsreader? Like, you know, like just, I'm talking about people from all kinds of cultures. Yeah, yeah. Anyone who isn't, That's who doesn't have a polished accent yeah. and is white and middle-aged and usually male. Yes. Like, you, they're never in a position of authority. And like, and that, that to me, I think, would help a lot. Yeah, because there aren't many sitcoms on Australian TV, but there's a lot of newsreaders and there's a lot of presenters of reality shows. And there's a lot of, lot of those kinds of people in authority who could normalise different cultures. Awesome. Thanks, Candy. Thanks, Chaz, for chatting diversity in the arts. Yeah, thanks for having me. You're so